everyone welcome back to another video discussion in this video we will be discussing about the samples and sampling methods okay when you will be talking about samples and sampling methods these are the terms that you should remember population as you can see here it is the biggest um, circle and then the target population the second biggest and then you also have the accessible population and you have the sample and then lastly the smallest one the subject or the research participant or informant so these are interchangeably used it could be the subject of the study or the participants of the study or the informant of the study so when we talk about population let us say for example um, your population are the senior high school students and then the target population which will be determined by sampling criteria let us say for example that your target population are the um, grade 12 senior high school students stem students and then you also have the accessible population in which these populations refer to the population who are available to the researcher so this is very timely and applicable in our time since we are in the new normal and we cannot um, conduct our study face to face so we will be maximizing the use of online surveys to reach out to our population so we need to identify who are our accessible population and then we have the sample in which it will be selected with a sampling method later on you will know what are the sampling methods and then once you have chosen your sample you have now your subject of the study or your participants of the study as you can see here in the right picture from the population the many people in the population it will be um, selected based on the sampling method in your sample all right so we have here what is a sampling a sampling is a process of systematically selecting individuals units or groups to be analyzed during the conduct of the study so in, in other words ang proseso ito yung proseso na ginagawa natin sa pagpili kung sino yung magiging participants ng study natin yan yung tinatawag nating sampling. So, meron tayong tinatawag na rule of thumb when you are going to get the number of participants in your study. If your research design, in the previous video, we have just um, talked what are the research designs. We have the correlational, um, the survey, in which a survey is under descriptive, and you also have experimental. So please take note that we are talking about the research design here and not the research instrument. Baka you will be confused because you can still use survey in the correlational or in the experimental study. But what we are talking here is the research design. So if your research design is correlational, um, the ideal number of participants is 100 to 200. And if it is survey, 800. And if it is experimental, at least 30 or more per group. So that is according to Lunenberg and Irby 2008. Now, um, we will be talking about the random sampling. So what are the types of random sampling when it comes to quantitative research design? So we will be talking about the four major types of the random sampling in which first you have here the simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified sampling and cluster sampling so let us go one by one to this um, graphics as you can see in the random sampling you have let us say for example you have 12 population and you only need four samples out from that 12 population so this is just random you are using the fishbowl technique or parang drawlets lang na lahat ng 12 participants lahat ng names nila nasa isang bowl and you will just be 
drawing or bubunot ka lang ng apat out from that 12. So, that is, of course, randomly selected. Nakakuha ka ng apat out from that 12. Next one is the stratified random sampling. Ngayon naman, sa stratified random sampling, meron ka pa rin 12 populations, total population, and still, you need 4 out from that 12 for samples. So, sa stratified sampling, as you can see here, sa ating picture, sa dito sa pinakataas, merong mga naka-blue, merong mga naka-green, pink, and red. Let us assume that this um, population in blue are doctors, green are teachers, pink are um, it could be our flight attendant, and red are police. So, Ngayon, kailangan mo ng equal representative dyan sa mga population, sa strata mo. So, since you need um, representative dyan sa population and you only need 4 samples, you will be, bakit random pa rin siya? Kasi di ba meron siyang representative na tatlo. So, pipili ka randomly sa tatlo na yan. So, bubunat ka. Isa sa mga doctors, isa sa mga teachers, isa sa mga flight attendant, at isa sa mga police. So, that is a stratified random sampling. Next one is we have the systematic sampling. So, pag systematic sampling, from the name itself, you are going to systemize. You are following a specific system in selecting your participants. So, the participants are selected from a list based on their order in the population or on a predetermined interval. This interval is obtained by dividing the population size by the sample size for the study. Let us say, for example, you would want to get the person, the first, um, the person in every third. So, in this example, the example here is every third person in the population. So, ayan, kukunin mo since every third, so it is the three, the third, the sixth, and the ninth person in the population. And so on. So, if every second naman, so it will be the second, the fourth, the sixth, and the eighth. So, ganyan na siya. Pag every fourth of the population, it's the fourth, the eighth, and the twelve, and so on. So, that is systematic sampling. Lastly, we have the cluster sampling. In the cluster sampling, this is somehow similar with stratified sampling and random sampling. But, they have difference, of course. In the cluster sampling, so, pag sinasabi natin cluster, of course, the participants are being grouped into clusters or subgroups but the difference in the stratified sampling sa stratified sampling we group the population according to their certain characteristics so kanina sa stratified if you still remember dito ginroup natin sila according to their profession meron tayong doctors meron tayong teachers meron tayong flight attendants and police men so dito naman sa cluster sampling uh Wala silang certain characteristics when we group them, but we have the groupings. And what we do in the cluster sampling is we do not just get a representative from each clusters, but we get the the whole clusters. Okay? So, example, dito meron tayong tatlong cluster. So, let us say for example, kailangan mo lang ng isang cluster. So, you just choose which among them. But, again, you draw if it is the first avenue, if it is the second, or if it is the third. So, kung mabubunot mo is the second avenue, lahat sila dito ang kasale sa sample mo. So, unlike this stratified that you get one from each clusters or from each, from each groups, in the cluster sampling, they are not grouped according to characteristic and you choose the whole clusters or the whole subgroups. Okay, so that's all for our um, sample.
samples and sampling methods. I hope that you understand the topic and good day everyone.